Good morning and welcome to this, the first conference of the Robert Menzies Institute at the University of Melbourne on Menzies, the early years, success, failure and resilience. I'm Georgina Downer and I'm the CEO of the Robert Menzies Institute and it is my pleasure to be your host today, both in person, which we all are here, and to our attendees online on Zoom, welcome as well. I wish to acknowledge the Wurundjeri, Woiwurrung and Boonwurrung peoples of the Kulin Nations as the traditional owners of the land on which the Institute stands and the University stands. We pay our respects to their elders, past, present, and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander cultures. We have with us today many, many special guests, but I do want to make a particular mention of the Minister for Education and Youth, the Honourable Alan Tudge, as well as eight of our amazing speakers who are here in person and the three who are joining us online. I'd also like to make a mention of the Dean of the Faculty of Arts here at Melbourne University, the Reverend Professor Russell Goldman, Professor Michael Cromlin from the Law School, the Honourable Fran Bailey, Menzies Research Centre Chair Paul Espy, Robert Menzies Institute Board Members Lee Clifford, David Kemp, Sue Baker, I haven't seen yet, but I think she's coming, and uh, Jeff Hone. And um, I also want to make special uh, mention of Barry Jones, former Labor Senator. Lovely to have you along, Barry, and a personal friend of Sir Robert. <clears throat> When I started planning this conference in May this year, I, of course, like all of you, had no idea of the twists and turns that COVID would throw us with lockdowns. So I am absolutely thrilled that we are able to gather here in person today and online as we get back to some semblance of normal life. Today's conference and this evening's gala dinner will mark the official opening of the Robert Menzies Institute. The Institute is a prime ministerial library and museum and it's dedicated to the life, the legacy, and the ideas of Australia's longest serving Prime Minister, Sir Robert Menzies. It is a joint effort of the Menzies Research Centre and the University of Melbourne. And we are also particularly grateful for the support of the Australian Government in establishing this institute here in the Old Quad, the historic, beautiful heart of the university in which we sit today. The institute is dedicated to exploring those ideas that Sir Robert uh, really championed and held dear, and their application to current and future problems and challenges faced by Australia and the wider world. Today's conference marks the first step in that journey, and subsequent three annual conferences that we will be hosting will form part of a, a series of four books to be published by Melbourne University Press and become the essential reference point for Menzies scholarship. Today, we are considering Menzies' early influences and his first contributions to public life. This was a period bookended by the two world wars and the ideas that Sir Robert championed were threatened by the forces of extremism, of authoritarianism, fascism and socialism. We have gathered together 11 fantastic speech speakers from a really diverse range of backgrounds who will in turn examine the early years of Sir Robert, his life and career, his beginnings, humble as they were in Japarat and then to Melbourne, his brilliant but short-lived legal career through to state and federal politics, his successes and failures as Prime Minister from 39 to 41, and finally his wilderness years when he delivered his forgotten people speeches. Given we are still affected by some state border closures, I'm looking at Queensland and WA here, we are delivering today's conference uh, online as well. And two of our speakers will be delivering their papers uh, virtually, which, um, which is great that they can do that even with the constraints of state border closures. Um, just some housekeeping. For those of you who are on Zoom, you will be able to ask questions uh, via the Q&A box, which is at the bottom of your Zoom screen. And those questions will be moderated by Robert Menzies Institute staff. Could you please just make sure that your name and affiliation are listed? We will have two breaks, one for morning tea and one for lunch. And during that time, we will have a hold screen up on the Zoom webinar. But if you want to log off, do other things, you can log back on, that's fine. Just use the same link. 
And this uh, conference is being recorded and will be up on the Robert Menzies Institute website next month. For those here today, lucky you, um, bathrooms are downstairs under the stairs. Um, as I said, there's a morning tea and lunch break. Um, I, we are still in the last stage of COVID restrictions, hopefully, um, and they will lift this weekend. But because of that, I would ask you to wear your masks when you're not eating and drinking, and please take a seat once you've got your food and drink and uh, sit down to eat and drink. We are expecting a student protest today, probably um, later this afternoon, uh, which we of course welcome in the spirit of free speech and a vigorous university life. Uh, and as I was saying to the Vice-Chancellor before, it wouldn't be um, a university campus if we didn't have a good student protest. But I do um, want to advise you, if you do leave the room and to go outside, please just make sure you show evidence of your ticket and your name badge. Today's schedule, like all conferences, is, is strict and you can find the schedule in the centre page of your booklet and if you haven't already got one there, there at the registration desk. Um, I will, because of the sh tight schedule, only very briefly introduce each, each speaker, so please do make sure um, if you want to know more about their background, you read their bios towards the back of the booklet. Speakers will speak for 20 minutes strictly and then 10 minutes of Q&A. Because of this hybrid nature of this conference, we have um, two very special guests to open it. One is joining us from online and the other sitting in front of me. But firstly, I would like to turn to the Prime Minister of Australia, the Honourable Scott Morrison. I'm delighted to join with you in celebrating the establishment of the Robert Menzies Institute at his alma mater, the University of Melbourne. And I'm also delighted to be part of this inaugural Menzies conference, aptly reflecting on the themes of Menzies success, failure and, importantly, resilience. In the life of any country, there are but a handful of men and women who, through their character and perseverance, their intellect and their values, they change the future of a country. Robert Gordon Menzies changed the course of Australia. He shaped so much of 20th century Australia. He didn't found a party based on a personality. Rather, he built an enduring party, Australia's most successful political party, based on enduring values. He described his liberalism, our liberalism, as a selfless one. In Menzies' view, the transformation of countries starts with the moral character and the agency of individuals rather than with the state. You're the answer, not the government. And that comes from an individual who grows a sense of duty to build a better world. Yours is an important conference because of the realisation that though times may change, wisdom stands forever. The value of Menzies, his judgement, his prudence, his sense of duty and love of country, his sense of proportion, his sense of humour and his warmth to friend and foe alike, they're timeless. And they are our liberal inheritance. The mistake of some is to believe that what Menzies believed is of the past. I just don't agree with that assessment. Couldn't disagree more. In his thoughts, in his words and his speech, Menzies had a vision, a remarkably consistent and timeless vision. It was a vision firmly of the future that is relevant today. Menzies built for the future. ANZUS, his encouragement of widespread home ownership, his rejection of sectarian religious divisions and anti-Semitism, the first trade treaty with post-war democratic Japan, and so much more, were all about a confident, liberal Australia. That's what he imagined, and that's what he achieved. Central's to Men Central to Menzies' vision of Australia, though, was education. His decisions expanding funding for higher education and funding for non-government schools transformed Australia. He had a great love for places of learning, places where wisdom embodies hope for the future, Menzies grasped every opportunity to advance the place of learning in Australian life. Schools, universities, libraries, he saw them as places for a constant interchange of ideas. He believed the freedom of the inquiring mind was vital to the future, and so it is today, as is the pursuit of knowledge being a right and a duty. So the Robert Menzies Institute 
that now sits within the universities of Melbourne's old quad. It's such a superb acknowledgement of this continuous thread of liberal education that wove and wandered throughout Menzies' life. For us, it will be a place of remembering and reimagining, a gift of wisdom via Sir Robert to the future. So congratulations to all involved in this new Prime Ministerial Institute, and I hope you all have a great conference. And now I'm delighted to introduce uh, the Minister for Education and Youth, Alan Tudge, to open our conference. Alan is, like me, an alumni of this university and, like me, studied here in the Old Quad um, doing law. He entered Parliament in 2010, but before that was a consultant working in Australia and the United States and also worked for a certain foreign minister and uh, Minister for Education. Alan, like Menzies, has an abiding passion for education, so you really are in the best portfolio for you. And uh, he was one of the co-founders of Teach for Australia, a national not-for-profit which targets top graduates from non-teaching faculties and fast-tracks them into teaching in disadvantaged schools. And he was also the deputy director of Noel Pearson's Cape York Institute. Welcome, Alan. Thank you.